Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. It is a blessing. It is an honor to be able to shuffle cards, pull the charts, and be able to hang out with you. So this week, there is a lot of shifts that are happening from the retrogrades, Mercury retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, and Uranus retrograde. This is going to feel like a vast blast from the past is what it is that I want to say, but it could be a blast in your life in general when it comes to specifically boundaries, communication, relationships, expectations, money. Yes, all of those chapters are things that we absolutely need to talk about and will absolutely be influenced by the energies of these planets. So grab some water, grab some tea, grab some coffee, grab some juice, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, my love, so welcome back. Hopefully you're cozied in, hopefully you're comfy. I don't know why, but I'm really feeling this Oracle card today, These, this Oracle card in particular. I forget the name of it, but I will link it down below. So don't mind me while I'm shuffling and talking about the transits. So like I said at the very start of this video, the retrogrades are very much intense for us this week. Now, if you are someone who kind of follows the flow of the masses, you could easily find yourself losing your cool and losing that sense of calm that is something that can be found within you at all times. It's in your best interest and your highest and greatest good if you ground yourself, center yourself, and come back to that center because from that place, you can't make any mistakes. From that place, your intuition really does start to speak to you, right? So regardless of what type of tumultuous storms that this these energies, the retrogrades, will inevitably kind of build up and brew, at the end of the day, still try to come back to your, your sense of um, your calm and your core, your center, and try to fold in your spirituality, prayer, setting intention, manifestations, etc., to help you through these energies. So the retrogrades in particular are kind of throwing a wrench in a lot of plans. Mercury retrograde first and foremost started December 13th. And most of you guys do know this. Mercury rules communication. It's how we express ourselves. It's how we analyze. It's how we think. It's where our minds go, right? Where our minds kind of drift. It's our ability to process information. Sometimes our, even our ability to hear, that is retrograde. It also rules our devices, our cars. And for that reason, we can see those devices like cell phones, cars, laptops, those, those things kind of breaking down or they might kind of be faltering in some way. So that can add a little extra agitation into an already already perfect storm in addition to that calendars plans that is that you set those things need to be shifted and adjusted maybe not a hundred percent right now in your mind but it's something that it is that you are considering so with this retrograde specifically with mercury transiting through the sign of capricorn a lot of this has to do with um boundaries expectations our ability to rely on others, our ability to count on others. Can you count on yourself? What is it that you thought was a sure, sound, solid thing? When this planet goes retrograde in the sign of Capricorn, it starts to bring up a lot of question marks. Those question marks can be found in your relationships with others, but it can also show up within your relationship with yourself. For many of you guys, I'm sure you're definitely feeling this influence, not because, not exclusively because of Mercury retrograde, but also Chiron is the asteroid that connects us to the spot that is, it's our wounded self. And we try so hard to move from a higher place when we're wounded, but sometimes it's very difficult. You can put in a lot of work and effort into healing that place, but it's almost like your Achilles tendon and it needs to be handled very, very carefully. Now, lately, Chiron retrograde has been transiting through the sign of Aries. And if you've been a longtime friend of my YouTube channel, you know that I've been talking about Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries, almost like a broken record. But it's because the influence of this is something that is really, really strongly felt, especially this week. So Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries right now is making every single one of us in individually ask ourselves, is this 
who I am. Is how I'm living, is this how I want it to be? Is this what I was expecting? How do I define myself? What do I want? It also makes you kind of strike out into independence so that those questions, those deep seated questions are things that can be um, answered in a way that is for your highest and greatest good and doesn't really necessarily take others into consideration. It can feel a little selfish if you say superficial level with it, but it's very important that you have a sense of identity, that you have a sense of self-worth and self-value and that your activities, your life, the thing that is that you're doing, especially because Aries is a sign of doing and war and action and our goals and our ambitions, making sure that outside of relationships, outside of our relationship with work, outside of our relationship with the community, outside of our relationships with our partners, do you have um, value outside of those things? Are there boundaries when it comes to those things? What are we doing in order to enforce, in order to reestablish healthy activities, healthy state of mind, healthy sense of being, sense of purpose? Those things are very, very important. What is it that is absolutely of value to you is another question too that's been showing up with Uranus retrograde and Jupiter retrograde in the sign of Taurus. Now, if we said stayed superficial with the energy of Taurus, we would think, oh, this means luxury goods and luxury items, it's our money. But no, go a little deeper than that. When we have our money, when we have resources, where do we spend them? Something that we work so hard, that time, that energy, that effort, where does that money go? That kind of reflects our priority, right? It reflects what is important to us, whatever that be, aesthetic, time with your partner, a massage for self-care, spending that money going to the doctor's appointment because you prioritize your health, spending that money going to yoga because you prioritize your mental and emotional well-being, or finding ways to use that, or maybe security. So putting food on the table, paying your bills, trying to save up for a nest egg business because you want to give back to the community. All of these things highlight what is most important to you now. And since Uranus and Jupiter have been transiting through the sign of your Uranus, especially Uranus is the planet of surprise, what you thought that you valued or what you always have valued has shifted greatly in a lot of ways. For example, if you are someone who is normally concerned with showing up for others and you know uh, your work way, like I can relate to this 100%, it may be that this value starts to shift so that you're prioritizing your more intimate connections, the quality of your life, maybe because you did all that you needed to do in order to build and to share and to contribute and to give. Now your values are shifting and that can be really, really tough. It can also create ebbs and flows in your sense of security because again, Taurus, even though not every single one of us has um, Taurus predominantly ruling our char chart, it does rule an area in your chart, believe it or not. And it can create a feeling of like, listen, that's something that I can go with the flow for a lot of things, but this is something that I don't want to budge on. So already we have really interesting dynamics here. Going a little further and deeper into the transits for this week, I don't want us to overlook the fact that Neptune is transiting through the sign of Pisces, as well as Saturn, the planet is of structure, commitment, pro promises, longevity, maturity is transiting through the sign of Pisces. Now, remember how I said in the very beginning, boundaries, 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 boundaries. These energies right now are amplifying that even further. I don't think any of us is really getting the, the easier side of this transit. And let me explain to you why. So Saturn is usually kind of connects us to the things that we promise ourselves, that we promise others, our hopes and ideal idealizations for the future in the sense that something concrete, logical, something that we're working towards, something that we are advancing towards, it also rules our maturity. And now that Saturn is transiting through the sign of Pisces, Pisces has no boundaries. <laughs> well, I should say this, Pisces really struggles, struggles with the realms of boundaries. There's no distinction between where do I begin? Where do I end? Where does this thing begin? Where does it end? It all tends to kind of bleed into each other like watercolor. Now for some things that's wonderful and that's beautiful, but for a lot of things that can be very unhealthy very, very quickly. And when Pisces, 
specifically as transiting through the sign of Neptune, it can be really hard to kind of distinguish, okay, this is something that it is that I want versus this is something that I feel obligated to. How do I say no to this? Should I say yes to this? Where, again, Saturn is here to try to reinforce that and to teach us really honestly the hard way. You know, if I can't enforce a boundary here, there's a lot that I could lose. There's a lot that I can lose. Also with this, uh, it's interesting because Pisces transiting through Neptune is very idealistic. It's this hope and dream for the future, this promise that we feel is written in the stars that we wanna strive towards. And Saturn is almost the polar opposite. It says hope is not something that is realistic. It's something, our success is something that we create. It's something that we can do if we're consistent, if we stick to it. So we have two completely polarizing energies here and we're all really feeling this right now. This is where we say, you know, I do have this dream, I do have this vision, but we have to be careful. You don't want to get lost in it. You don't want to lose things that are important to you because of situations that may not have any boundaries. So can you find the balance between those two worlds? I know in my personal life too, that's something that I've been working on pretty thoroughly, you know, really trying to look after um, energy flow, energy re resources. That's remember how I was telling you guys all this year to keep an open mind. Try not to pin your your life and your expectations into well. If I go this way, this is the only way. These energies are very vast, and the foundation underneath us is actively breaking down, which means that your your faith, your vision, your hope is going to be the thing that keeps you. But you know, flying, but at the same time, you're going to have the weight, the anchor of like, how, yes, I have this vision, but how can I make it work? Or where can I go? Especially with asking for help, asking for insight, asking for guidance, whether it be professionals, whether it be your family, your friends, whether it be a counselor, whether it be your higher self, your spirituality, there's not a lot of answers. Well, there's a lot of answers that can come from us, but there's a lot of answers that we can gain by asking the wisdom of others who have come before us. And that's the other thing that um, the magic of what Neptune and Pisces and Saturn and Pisces can give is the wisdom of the elders, the, the wisdom of those who are higher, have higher knowledge, higher awareness from even going to higher education, school, university, traveling is another another realm here that's really beautiful pursuing astrology pursuing esoterics um uh, symbolism and studies all of those things are all natural healing there's there's a way to kind of move beyond now i want to just kind of pinch off of that just a little bit so let's say this was something that's related to health a wonderful way to kind of describe this is you may find that your body if let's say you're having health conditions right now, knock on wood, cross, cancel, delete, we don't speak that over your life, but let's say you're feeling health related issues. This would be something that's very hard for you to kind of put your finger on and say, this is exactly the source. This energy is coming from all these different places in all these different ways. And it may either make you feel high vibrational, thriving, happy, healthy, or it could be grogginess, drowsiness, um, weepiness, depression, sickness, you know, infection is another thing too that can show up big time with these transits. It's really hard or something going on with like aches and pains all over the body and it's hard for you to kind of pinpoint where this is coming from. The symptoms themselves just don't make sense. On the flip side of that, we have the extreme of Saturn coming through and says, okay, we're going to chop this up. We're going to give this medication. We're going to give that. And the truth is, is that you're going to have to try to find the in-between of both of those worlds and really start to listen and prioritize like holistic mind, body, soul connection all across the board. Sorry, Nova's in. No. All right. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. The mailman's dropping um, mail off, probably Christmas gifts at this point. Did you guys do your Christmas shopping? Or are we a little bit late this year? Okay, so the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about, and this is going to be a little bit difficult of a transit, but I'm going to go ahead and lean into the difficulty and then migrate into the more positive aspect of what it is that I can see from this and how to work with this. Okay, so stay with me here. On the 21st, we do have some really difficult energies, especially in alignment, 
I, I want to say in conjunction with, but it's not that um, Venus and Uranus are conjunct Mercury or vice versa. I just say literally at happening at the same time. That's what I mean by the conjunction because conjunction is an astrology term as well. Um, at the same time, Mercury is retrograde. So this is any type of lingering issues. Wow, look at this at the bottom of the card. We have time to let go. And then we also have this card here, Cat Spirit, Claim Your Independence. So that's exactly what it is that we're talking about here. Um, so yeah, with Mercury retrograde, there could be a lot of um, conversations, thoughts, lingering things that haven't necessarily been dealt with and addressed. And this would not be new. How I know that this isn't new is the fact that Mercury specifically is transiting through the sign of Saturn. So these are the things that we could be holding on like a vault, not intentionally, but just trying to power through every day and trying to make the best of a situation, whatever that situation looks like. The problem is, is that when Mercury's retrograde, that planet Mercury starts to lose its ability to hold everything in it's it's needs to communicate and it tends to communicate at what feels like it is inappropriate at wrong times but the truth is is that things come out when they need to come out and especially looking at this transit right now we can't overlook the fact that saturn is trying the vertex point vertex is sitting in the sign of scorpio vertex is the point of faded encounters and saturn is literally where Mercury, Saturn rules what Mercury is falling into, Capricorn. So this is showing right away that there's some long, deep-seated um, feeling here or some truth maybe was expressed. It's having a difficult time being taken care of. Um, this could have a lot to do with boundaries. It could have a lot to do with expectations. It could have a lot to do with feeling taken advantage of, um, lack of clarity, mis misuse and abuse of um, relationships, boundaries. I don't think that this is intentional. I think that looking at the chart, I, I feel like I can give a lot of grace to the matter because um, it's clear that things aren't clear, right? It's clear that communication has been missed. It's clear that wires are getting crossed. It's clear that it's not getting all the way through, right? So with these energies, you it's in your best, um, it's in your best, well, I don't wanna say what's in your best interest, but I will say that you have a um, bubbling pot of soup <laughs> that has been on the stove for a minute. And when Mercury retrograde pops up its head and says, hey, remember me? It, the pot may be boiling, boiling over. Or what hopefully, what you've been cooking, this is a metaphor, right? But what you've been cooking, it's not burnt, it can be saved. So, but it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of transparency, it takes a lot of honesty, and there's the, the relearning or the reestablishment of these boundaries. Now, a lot of us individually are, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about ourselves, especially with Chiron retrograding inside of Aries. We learned a lot about what we want. We learned a lot about what we don't want. And those things that can be clearly defined, a lot of people are literally going with this independent nature. It can be a little excessive or extreme of being like, I can't count on anyone but myself with this cat. I don't know why this is not focusing. Okay. With this cat energy here and Chiron um, retrograde and sign of Aries, which is something else that you want to look, be careful for. Sometimes people use independence as a weapon um, or sometimes the way that communication comes through is a weapon and can be intentional. It can feel malicious. It can feel very aggressive. You don't want to do that. Remember the very opposite of Aries is and the reason why we're focusing on Aries right now is because Chiron retrograde is in the sign of Aries. The very opposite of Aries is Libra, and Libra does prioritize harmony, but not to the extent that your boundaries are being crossed or your identity. Like you, you can't be yourself. It's not. We want to make sure that we're finding a good balance, and the balance is not always going to be fifty fifty, but at least it pours into. The other situation enough so if you find yourself in situations right especially now that pluto's in the final degrees of uh capricorn if you find yourself kind of stuck in a pattern if you kind of find yourself kind of stuck in an old way you're going to be more apt than not to try to fix it try to figure it out or or b c find a way out so um everyone's story is going to be different again i'm this is a 
very specific reading for a general audience. So I'm not individually pulling everyone's chart here and uncovering everything. I just want to say where this might, how this might be influencing you, whether it be your career, your job, your relationships, your structure, your routine, your health, your relationship with your doctors, all those other things. The interesting thing is that there isn't, there is a really strong opportunity here um, or potential for splitation, like splitting, um, to move away from things that don't serve you or getting space from the things that don't feel like they're, it's being heard or received very well. Um, the reason why is because Venus, the planet that rules love, relationships, beauty, aesthetic, she's transiting through the sign of Scorpio. She needs depth, intimacy. She needs to be seen and understood. On the flip side, Scorpios is not the easiest to transit when it comes to our emotions because it can really trigger deep fears, resentment, anger, um, and those shadow aspects. And directly opposite of Uranus, we think that this thing is a sure thing in the sign of Taurus. And it kind of can create an explosive separation, splitation. Try to take the break if it's needed, but um, just know that some reflection could be wise here as well. But I don't, I'm never the type of person to say like, oh, this is a week for, you know, splits, breakups and stuff like that. But um, everyone's story is going to be totally, wow. Wait till you see these cards. <laughs> Wait and right on time. Wow, guys. Nope, I can't even go any further. I need to show you these cards. So the first card to jump out was the Panther Spirit, Reclaim Your Power. I don't know if you can see the focus in this Panther's eyes and dedication and determination. The next card we have here is Swan Spirit, Time for a Deep Dive. Exactly, that's very Venus and Scorpio and also even Mercury Retrograde, believe it or not. Believe it or not, it does have the opportunity to go deep if you are willing to take the time to do it. If you're really willing to take the time, not only to express yourself, but also to listen. And if, if not, you know, explore, okay? Looking at different solutions, looking at different opportunities. Next card we have here is Bat Spirit. A rebirth is assured. So for some of you guys, you might be fearing um, the end of something here, especially with this Groundhog Spirit, time to let go. Try not to get too extreme with this. It's hard to do that, especially if we're working with um, planets that are kind of revealing us to our, our shadow side. Sometimes when something is ending, it's not necessarily the whole of it, it's the dynamic. So try to set your sights on that. Try to set intention for what should be, will be. I do wanna say that there is this positive opportunity here with Mercury retrograde trining um, Saturn to go ahead and kind of like work through these things, especially if you're taking the time to reflect, to find the words to connect. Be respectful. And then on the 22nd, we have the sun actually conjoining with uh, Mercury here, Mercury retrograde. Let me just go ahead and double check this. Yep. That's a wonderful time for communication, for ideas, for brilliant solutions to past problems, especially now that Mercury is retrograde. Or this is a wonderful time for you to kind of like retreat and to find some time for yourself if needed. Shortly after that, on the 23rd, Mercury is going to enter into the sign of Sagittarius. This is going to be a wonderful transit as well because it makes our minds go from focused and figuring out through the drought, you know, or through the harsh times or through the fire. And now all of a sudden we're like, towards the end of the week, we're like, okay, fresh perspective, imagination, maybe not imagination, but fresh perspective here. And then on the 24th, which I believe is a Sunday. Yeah. We have sun trining off with Saturn and that's going to make us feel more capable when the start of the week it can feel a little like exhausting or reflective or quiet or concerning right it can bring up a lot of um concerning um fears issues and stuff like that um throughout all of this i do want to tell you that the moon is going to be transiting through the sign of taurus the majority of this week first aries which means that this energy is going to be hot and active but then we're going to do um Mercury, I'm sorry, the moon transiting through the sign of Taurus, which means that the thing that really helps us is like stability, support, grounding, centering, going for walks, disconnecting, taking your time, but also remember Taurus is a bull, right? So just like a bull is fine out in the field, kind of picking at the 
plants and chewing and munching and enjoying its time, a bull can easily be activated and will charge. So these are some energies that we really need to look out for. I just pulled a card here. Wow. And it fell. It says chameleon spirit act as if. I think that this is um, that energy sometimes where um, it's not that it's act asking you to not be truthful, but it's to, if you're not feeling peaceful, if you're not feeling like in alignment, kind of sometimes helping yourself um, actually move into alignment is going to the places that match the energy that is that you want to feel so that you can match that vibe, blend into it and start to become it and to match that. So this is one thing too, that if you're someone who needs to have space and distance, um, or if you're in the thick of things, it's not a bad idea to retreat into nature and to find yourself kind of reflecting the patience, the grace, the beauty of, and the growth of nature herself. And that's just one of the first things that come to my mind. All right, my loves, I hope that this message was short, sweet to the point and helpful to you. Please let me know down in the comments your rising sign, specifically your sun sign. I do want to do your moon. I, I am curious to hear your moon, but specifically I want to focus on sun and rising, emphasis on rising, because I want to hear how these energies for you and exactly where they're falling within your chart. I'll know by when you say your rising sign, how, how they're influencing you specifically with Mercury retro, well, all the retrogrades. I'm really doing my research here with this. I'm curious to know if this is something that because honestly, for me, this is the first time that I'm seeing these types of transits happening in my life. So I'm really interested on in hearing if this is something that's going to be predominantly positive for people or more difficult. Um, and that's one of the beautiful blessings of having a YouTube channel is I can ask for a consensus. I can take a little vote here. Now, two cards before, oh my goodness, three cards before I say goodbye. The first ones are Dove Spirit, Be Peace. Oopsie, I dropped it. Then we have Squirrel Spirit, Believe in Yourself. And then the last card, Parrot Spirit, Watch Your Words. Watch your words, watch what you say. And also, remember how parrots kind of like listen? They pick up, they listen, they hear, they, re they repeat, okay? So I don't know who that message is for, but if you'll know, you know. Also check out my shirt, it says 111 Intuition. Let me show you the back too, because we have some time. Let me show you the back. Isn't that cool? So cute. All right, my loves, I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If this is um, not your first time hanging out with me at the YouTube channel, but you're not subscribed, I invite you to join and hang out with me more often. Make sure that you subscribe and you turn on that notification bell. If you are subscribed, YouTube is going through it. YouTube as a whole, the platform is going through it. Um, so. It, make sure that you unsubscribe and resubscribe. It helps um, the algorithm a little bit. Um, and also helping the YouTube channel is giving this video a thumbs up. It really does make a difference. So for all everyone else, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm gonna go ahead and get back into wrapping and packing and fulfilling orders. So if you guys have any questions about orders, anything else like that, go ahead and send an email over at info at Bahati Life. I'm gonna go deal with that now and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.